And what's up, everybody? Welcome to this special edition of Burnline Cigar News. We just had so much with PCA 2024. We didn't have time in the podcast. Yeah, it's for just all of it. It's too much information. But we want to keep you on the cutting edge, front of your seat when it comes to the cigar industry. And we're going to share with you the stuff that nobody else will share with you. I'm Johnny Midas. And I'm Angel El Fumo Solario. El Fumo. We collected a bunch of stuff now. The, the thing with PCA, PCA is like, it's the, the thing. You yeah. said it was like the, the SEMA of the cigar world, yeah, right? right? So it's the trade show. It's where everybody shows off all their shit. And there's like little leaks coming out leading up to it. Right. And, you know, people are waiting for the big review. Teaser. Yeah, yeah. It's the, um, it's the freestyle live for everybody else. Yeah, right? that's right. Uh, yeah. Just so, got the jump on that. Yeah. Um, and so what ends up happening is a lot of stuff comes out and people are focused on like one or two things. And, and so stuff, you know, kind of slides under the radar yeah. and, and nobody picks up on it. And so we picked out all of the best things that you need to know about what's going on with cigar manufacturers and the industry to keep you informed. And that's what we do at Burnline. That's is, right. Uh, we make sure that you guys are on top we have of everything. The inside scoops. We have the inside scoops. Um, so we've got our uh, we've got our Mexican Mafia Don here right. and our Eastern European Mafia Don over here. Right. Our arms <laughs> I mean, we look good, though, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we do. We look good. Yeah, that's we our We should actual... totally, this should be the new podcast outfit. Yeah, I dig it. Us. That, that's our actual day jobs is uh, illicit activities. Yeah. You, you look good <clears throat> in black. I do. I love black. That's my favorite color. I, look, I looked better in black when my hair was black. Now it's mostly gray. Uh, Hey, don't laugh. You're getting there. Yeah. It's so, over, isn't it? <laughs> all right. So we've got um, a bunch of news. Some of it's, why don't you take the cigar stuff? I'll take the business stuff. Okay. And why don't you lead off? we got a, a big collab announcement. All right. So Arturo Fuente and Pedro, for the past two PCA conventions, have been teasing the fuck out of a collab. You know, and then last year right before that show kicked off, they're like, all right, here we go. We got a big announcement. And then boom, at the show, they're like, "Never mind, shut up. Right, and then, right. And finally this year, they made the announcement that they're doing a collab and they're gonna be announcing the Promoso package. And it's a limited cigar. It is limited to 20 10 count cigars. So very, very limited. You wanna know what the final price tag is? It's Johnny Midas price tag, $47,000. $47,000 and it comes in a safe that's right a safe that gets delivered in an armored car get a personal phone call from, from fuente yeah and they tell you over the phone so padron and fuente call you and they give you the code that's right say. so it's it like impossible to like right uh what do you call it counterfeit that's or right. you know there's no black market because you can't get into the safe oh and you're contractually obligated to own it you cannot resell it and no resale yeah, yeah. so uh, kind of typical, what you might expect from these guys. They're always putting out awesome high-end right. stuff. And um, so there you go, the uh, Promoso package. So look it up and uh, buy yourself a Promoso safe if you can afford it. Um, meanwhile, on the business side, um, mergers and acquisitions still going strong in the cigar industry. Um, there's always rumors about who's going to gobble up who and, you know, who Alec Bradley got taken yeah. over by General last year and... Uh, so Rojas has been looking to expand its distribution footprint, and it was announced at PCA 2024 that uh, Rojas is acquiring Scandinavian Tobacco Group for 435 billion U.S. dollars. Um, so that should get the street taco into a lot of households That's right. you know, around the globe, China and, Absolutely. and Indonesia. And and tacos for everybody. Tacos you get a for taco, everybody. You get a taco. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So shout out to Rojas. Great job with that. Make it some money moves. Yeah. Some insane money moves. Yeah, yeah, big money moves from uh, Rojas. They're really moving up, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, pretty insane there. Uh, speaking of insane. That's right. You got some asylum news? That's right, some insane asylum news. <clears throat> so Asylum is releasing the new uh, DC, line, DC Villains line, which features the Joker, which is going to be a 10 by 38 double Lancero. 10 by 38 double Lancero called yep. the Joker. The Joker. And then the Bane, a hey, this is a big one, kind of like Bane. Bane's a big motherfucker. Nine by ninety, featuring an Indonesian Indonesian Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, 
with Ecuador and Cameroon binder and Canadian Piloto filler. Canada's sneaking in on there. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Canadian tobacco market's really been picking up. Um, you know, they had that issue with exports <clears throat> coming across the border. The truckers couldn't get through. Right. They weren't wearing masks or something. Sure. Um, it looks like Justin Trudeau's got that all straightened out, and yeah. uh, Canada's back in the tobacco game. So, That's right. a big shout out to Asylum for taking advantage of that. I think they're, um, you know, the first one back on the train, yeah. the, the Canadian tobacco train. So, uh, that sounds like a really interesting stick. Um, looking forward to that. And uh, back on the business side, the cigar wars, you know, they're heating up. So Ooh. we've got, you know, Nicaragua has, has just, ever since, you know, the, the, the embargo in the 80s, you know, in the Civil War and the Sandinistas, all that stuff. Like, they've been growing. Dominican Republic, of course. Now you've got Honduras, Ecuador. Um, who's left out is Cuba. So the U.S. still has an embargo on Cuba. And, and so in response, uh, Castro and his Communist Party have agreed to purchase a 100-year lease of the Candega region of Nicaragua. In 2027, um, they will be essentially taking over that region and uh, producing cigars. And now they're legal to export to the U.S. Hmm. So, awesome. Yeah, nice so workaround. It's a great workaround. So they'll, they'll be importing Cuban tobacco that it's illegal to import it to Nicaragua, right? Yeah. And then they'll be exporting it to the U.S. Yeah, it's been far um, too long, man. Yeah, so 2028, you should see Cubans on the shelf in the U.S. Let's go. Um, Not so, some fake ass bullshit Canadian Cubans. Yeah, like it, so, you know, it, it, we got to wait a few years, but we finally solved that problem. Um, so shout out to the communists for taking over a country and um, you know doing their thing. Yeah, um, that's right. Really looking forward to that as a cigar aficionado. That's right. Um, so good job there. Uh, shout out to the Communist Party of Cuba. Um, oh, and uh, I guess this kind of this kind of legal news, not really a cigar, but tell us about Gurkha. So uh, you remember we were we discussed the uh, legal issue between Gurkha and Davidoff mm -hmm. concerning the Year of the Dragon, because mm -hmm. uh, Gurkha apparently had uh, claim to a Year of the Dragon, so mm -hmm. they sued Davidoff. Man, I thought Davidoff had it in the bag. I was like, there's no way Gurkha's gonna beat him, but hey. Here they are. They beat them. You know what they got? They got four hundred and thirty-two dollars and seventeen cents out of that settlement after legal fees. So good for them, man. They got something yep. out of it yep. and the patent. Yep. So great job, Gurkha, standing by your guns. You 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 should see all of those Year of the Dragon cigars pulled off the shelves right. in the next you know couple of weeks. That aren't a, Gurkha. Yeah, that that aren't Gurkha. Um, as well, they won a little bit of money yeah. uh, in the lawsuit. So. Shout out to Gurkha. I feel like that was a lot of time and money well spent, you know, yeah. to protect your brand and really make your mark in the cigar world. Yeah, man. You know? I, I, I didn't think they would get it, but yeah. they got it. Yeah. Like sometimes you just have to defend your territory. Right. You know, let people know, hey, I'm a player. Just because you're Davidoff doesn't mean that you can take my intellectual property. Right. You know, kind of which like they are, they're legally leasing from the Chinese government anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lunar New Year thing. Right. Uh, so, you know, like they went to the trouble. So they should reap the benefits. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, kind of like their namesake, you know, that Gurkha spirit, that fighting yeah. spirit. Yeah. You know, the they fight, just, yeah. Yeah. They just kept going at it. Yeah. So big, big shout out to Gurkha for um, all of the time and energy they put into something that fruitful for the cigar industry. Um, and then finally, I think, you know, the, the big piece of news that, um, you know, this, this kind of people were talking about a little bit, but it just seems like we lose interest when we start talking about legal stuff. Yeah. Um, the FDA has proposed a generational tobacco ban for the United States. They are working in conjunction with the United Nations Office of Tobacco and Controlled Substances. Um, you know, they got a, yeah. a guy out in, in uh, Belgium or something that comes up with these ideas. So he's working with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, BATFI, in the U.S. Um, and this generational tobacco ban is scheduled to go into effect next July. Uh, basically, if you were born before January 1st, 2000 in the United States, you will no longer be allowed to purchase tobacco products. Um, well, it is open for public comment. And that's why we wanted to share it with you guys as, you know, as required by law. Um, it is posted for public comment until April 2nd. Yeah. Um, so jump on the FDA website. Make sure you go to the public comment section and let them know what the hell, you know, like we don't agree with this. This is bad for cigar industry and and for people and what about freedom stuff like that so right. 
you know, just make sure you go to the FDA website and you, we want to see millions of people on there saying, hey, you know what, get out of my smokes, yeah. you know. So. Or on the flip side, <clears throat> for us uh, smokers that aren't affected by the ban, more cigars for us, mm. more affordable cigars because now there's an overabundance of uh, cigars because nobody's now allowed to buy them. Uh, the population. Silver lining and all yeah, that. So. So. But that's but, what's... Uh, that's what's going on yeah. in uh, in the cigar world, and you know you you might have kept up with PCA, you might not have, um, and so we wanted to just come out and let you guys know the really important stuff that is going on in the cigar industry, because yeah. that's what we do on Burnline. Yeah, we, we educate, are we yeah. inspire, we make sure that you're on the inside of everything in the industry. Yeah, we are your cigar news. We want to be your cigar. News. We want to be your cigar news. Yeah, yeah. we we all get it. This is it. There's no other source. <laughs> Absolutely not. This is this is it. The, the the last stop for everybody. I'm Johnny Midas, and I'm Angel El Pumo Solario from Union Cigar in Hanover, Pennsylvania, USA. Cigar news of the week. Have a great one.